damn, it's hot. Oh. Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. Path magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. Welcome to the Fear of Magic, guys. My name is Greg. <laughs> How are you guys going? And where have I been? <laughs> it's been uh, it's been over two weeks, hasn't it? I've missed the last two weeks' videos, and I almost was going to miss this one because I um, had something else <laughs> completely different planned, and I haven't finished it. And that's not because it's a super fantastic video or anything. There's just been a couple of circumstances that have stopped me from uh, finishing it. In fact, I had two videos actually for the last two week sessions and they're both um, not finished. <laughs> I do want to give you some updates um, on a few things, so here's a good opportunity. Um, I've got a couple of notes here just so I remember to cover a number of things. The first thing is, is in terms of those two videos, um, one is about the Daytona update. So there has been some uh, progress on the Daytona side, so I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. And the other one that I did was a um, was the start, oh, about halfway through, but was uh, a swap over from a LCD to a CRT. And I know, you know, there's got to be people out there that want to do such a conversion. I know a lot of people do it the other way, CRTs to LCDs. That's the that's the way everyone wants to do it these days. But, um, you know me, I'm, uh, I'm CRT all the way. It's got to be CRT, guys. Got to have that phosphor glow. And... Um, LCDs only should be used in very limited circumstances. So that's the other video and that will come out uh, soon. The other thing I want to do is once I've got those two out of the way, there might be something in between, um, but then I did mention before that I was going to do an update of the theatre because I haven't done one since you know started the channel and it's actually been, I can't believe this guys, it's been over a year that the channel has been going. Um, and you know we're well over 60 60 videos in <laughs> so, so that's uh it's been a, you know it's been a lot of work it's been a great journey um the theater has changed heaps since then and if you're a late joiner to the channel then um i'd like to sort of give the opportunity to go back around the the whole theater and show you guys what's in here now and also again the plan going forward for all these machines let me just give you a couple more updates. One thing that I've been waiting for a long time, guys, is, and for you guys who have been around for a while, you will remember way, way, way back, uh, we talked about the Missile Command cabinet that I picked up. And that Missile Command had a really rusty old control panels, which I uh, wanted to replace. And I spent a lot of time doing that machine up. And the intention always was to come back to that machine and do the full story about it. And I will still do that, I wanted to get the artwork recreated and I was um, given assistance from Hackon who's one of our subscribers and thanks Hackon for um, for doing all that fantastic artwork again. So he retraced the entire Missile Command cocktail um, control panel artwork because it is the Tato version of it and it's not been done. So uh, it's not the um, not the Atari version, it's not the Sega version, it's the Tato version, completely different artwork. So Hakon uh, kindly did that, and shout outs to his mate Mads as well, both very, very nice guys, and have been following the channel for a while. And he gave me the artwork, I got this old game engaged, and you guys that are in the art, you know, been around uh, with your machines for a while will know this old, old game is quite well known in the industry, like internationally. And um, he, uh, the guy behind it, uh, is very supportive of the arcade scene, and and you know, full props for 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 that. You know, he's he's really you know supports it. He tries to find. Um, artwork that hasn't been done before and he's always trying to push the limits in terms of the artwork that's available to help people restore machines and look 100% behind all that support. 
But there's one small issue with that company, <laughs> the way that they operate, and that is it just takes them forever to get the artwork out, guys. And it's you know, and it's not just me. I, I, I in terms of the artwork that I got asked them to do. I've read on the internet and there's been a lot of people that have just waited like like months, guys, absolute months for their artwork to done. One guy actually waited over a year for his artwork to arrive. I was like, really? And it was only until I started waiting for my artwork to come for the Missile Command and I ordered a couple of other things I'll show you in a second. And I suddenly realised this is not, this is not coming. <laughs> so um, I had to follow up and follow up and I got stories about how I paid by PayPal and they couldn't match the payment and then they did match the payment and there's something with, wrong with their system but now it's all sorted and it will be you know there next week and then next week comes and it's not there and and guys it went on and on and on uh, for four months. So I, um, I finally got the artwork after another email through and um, let me, well first of all let me just show you the artwork first. So this is the awesome uh, retrace that Hackon did and of course it's been reproduced here by this old game. So this is going to look, look absolutely stellar on the uh, Missile Command uh, cocktail cab for sure. The quality is excellent, there's no doubt about it. Um, but I know the guy, the guy Julian that did uh, all Player One's uh, artwork at his place, the stuff that's on um, Michael's uh, machines out at Player One, it's just as good as this, if not better. I, I don't know. I mean, this is super thick. I'm sure this will be really durable and, and will do the trick. But I don't think it's like mega, mega special now that I've seen um, what other people can do, and especially Julian at Player One. So I don't know if it's worth the wait for four months. But having said that, um, you know, I mean, he's, they have produced it. It was custom artwork. It was one off from Hackon's design. And but, you know, again, given the files to Julian, I'm sure he'd be able to print the same thing and I'd have it, you know, next week. So I don't know, guys. The other thing I did get from them was a new uh, Space Invaders overlay. So this is for uh, the green bit at the bottom on the original Space Invaders and then we've got the orange piece that goes across where the saucer is because mine's all chewed up. And we'll look at that another day guys, not just putting that on but there's something else on that Space Invaders which I need to cover. So that's at least arrived and I can do that now. And the last piece of artwork was for a multi Williams, Williams cab. And um, I actually like this design. There's a couple of designs, guys, for, for the Multi Williams. Um, this one I prefer because it looks more like the original Defender uh, control panel. And, you know, again, it's super good quality. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It looks fantastic. But, guys, the cab that I was going to put that on, that was going to be the conversion of the championship sprint, which would be completely reversible, of course but that's no longer in the theatre because I've moved on since then. I don't have that cabinet in here anymore. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, so I think I will revisit this, but I don't know exactly where which cabinet it's going to go on now. So, hence, hence my problem. Now, what I want to sort of share with you is really my thoughts on this because... He, the guy at this whole game, um, again, as I said, completely supportive of the industry and all the rest of it, and does good work, there's no doubt about it. He has a lot of people, you know, promoting his work, but again, a lot of people saying, but he takes his time and da-da-da, and he sure does. The thing that I find just, there's a couple of things that I find crazy about this, guys, <laughs> if you agree with me or not. If it's going to take you four months or six months, then just tell people that's the normal delivery time, right? If that's, if that's going to be the normal situation, just say, hey, you want good quality, I can give you good quality, but it's going to be four to six months. Set the expectation and then you won't have people just getting sort of irate, having to, you know, wonder where it is and follow up and, you know, should you refund it? You don't know what, you know, it, it just sends the wrong message to the customer and I think if there's no one else that can produce, produce the quality um, and, I, and arguably I think there are people that can but um, there's certain, certainly unique designs that, that he has um, which you probably can't get anywhere else in which case you know you sort of got the market sewn up in that space so you can you can you know you could literally set your own time frames for when things get delivered but just let people know <laughs> just 
don't, you know, don't, you know, come up with excuses and bits and pieces. Just tell it how it is. Tell it straight. The better approach from a business perspective, of course, is if you've got that amount of demand, <laughs> you know, get someone else in, invest a bit, get someone else in and get those orders pumping out. I'm sure if he could pump the, these, these around, he would just, oh, the business would just take off, absolutely. I mean, I had been considering getting other artwork in the meantime, but I was like, well, I need to wait and see this artwork coming through first. So anyway, guys, I know, Again, it's a bit of a long story. It's not really a rant about that, but I think just as a, a helpful hint for you, if you, any of you are considering getting artwork from this old game, yes, great quality. Yes, it's going to take a long time, probably. So just be prepared for that. Maybe look at other options as well. And hopefully, you know, it's rich at this old game as well. Um, and Kendra, I think, is the other person there that works with the support. And, and look, very, very nice. Don't get me wrong. There's <laughs> nice people. It's not like they're horrible or anything. It's just that we just don't get the product that you buy quickly. So if they can sort that out, awesome. Uh, until then, just be wary of that. Okay, so what else? A few other updates, and boy, geez, it is getting getting hot in here. That we're getting into summer, guys, and it's starting to heat up. And this theatre, I tell you what, I've only I've got one vent for aircon, and it really starts cooking in here. And you put all the machines on, it gets like a sauna, and that's not good for the machines. So, I really am thinking actually this summer that I may have to try and get another vent in here and get the aircon reconfigured because now I've got actually so much more machines in here. If I have a party in here now, wow, way too much heat. Now, other updates uh, behind me, the OutRun, it's not working still. <laughs> so that's another thing that I'm waiting on at the moment. And uh, the two boards, one, my um, my board, which I got from eBay, which was a, uh, a non-worker playing blind. That one's gone to Joey at JMac, along with the board that Michael lent me from Player One. So his board works, but the controls don't work. And we really suspected that back to the board with all the things that we tested. Both of those are with Joey. Um, <laughs> he's he's inundated. He's been helping heaps on other other things for me as well. I don't want to push my luck there, so I, I you know he's he's terrific, um, and I don't mind a delay with Joey because I know that he's uh, he's just super busy and running his normal business. So he's just help, again helping the industry on the side. Um, but again, he's one that will set expectations. If he's busy, he's busy, and that's cool. I'm happy with that, you know. Just having someone local to help out with these things um, is great, because otherwise I'd be completely stuck. So anyway, at some point, we hopefully will get that board back. Hopefully Joey can fix it, fix both boards, so I can give the other one back to Michael too, and then he can get his outrun running. And I did mention before in previous video that Michael had uh, he give, given me his board, even though the controls didn't work, I was just going to stick it in here to just run up the screen, at least have something running, because he had got MAME working on his, but then he's blown up his APAC on his um, outrun, so then he was asking if he could get the PCB back if it had been fixed, and of course it hasn't been fixed yet. So we've got both outruns down uh, now with both PCBs down. So anyway, let's hope that uh, Joe Mac has a win and uh, we get the outrun up and going. The other thing you'll notice uh, to the left here is this is not um, Super Street Fighter. <laughs> so what's going on here? And it's not Alien vs Predator either. Well, I've done the old Raspberry Jammer in there, guys. And just so you remember, these little guys, these are the Raspberry Jammers. And you've got a jammer edge connector uh, board on the back here, got Raspberry Pi 3 on the top. All connected through, converts it um, straight into a jammer harness, plug and play, uh, stick your SD card in there, run all your main uh, versions, and that is the best, I think, the best board money can buy these days for emulation. I know like the FPGA, um, the real you know FPGA uh, logic circuits that recreate uh, the boards at, at a more at a chip level those things are awesome um, for select games but if you want you know the, the typical main flexibility uh, on a small you know card like that get yourself a, a raspberry jammer you can go to Aussie arcade look up deer uh, d e e r I think it is and uh, that's Dylan uh, is his name there. 
check him out he'll sort you out one of these he does all the software you just tell him if you want it vertical horizontal we'll set it up for you you come over it's plug and play guys and this is you know this is the future for me for anything that's emulated at least you know, broadly and uh, certainly I look for any FPGAs if I can um, for anything specific and there's also other options as well some other things we could talk about another time uh, but I can't you know rave more highly about these things they a godsend I just don't like having PCs and cabinets playing MAME anymore I've got my main main box and I need a PC for that guys because I'm still running the triple screens and stuff I wish I could run a just a secondary screen with the um, Raspberry Jammer and, and you know put it up here as the uh, as the marquee. And funnily enough, I just did a search on eBay, guys, and Vitrolite are the people that made the um, the previous marquee that I've got on my main box. They've got one right now that's exactly the size. In fact, it's a little bit bigger. I think it's 630 across um, by uh, 200. And the 200 high is exactly that. 630 across is just a little bit in. I think this is 620 basically. But I think with just a slight little groove, if I cut a slight groove on the inside of that, I could slot that thing in, guys. That would be a whole marquee as a second screen. Have it a dynamic. And with this, you know, beautiful 25, 26 inch um, screen, this will be the new main box got to convert all the controls eventually I'll get the PC in there because I'm going to need it for those triple screens at the moment though it's running the Raspberry Jammer and uh, absolutely loving it for that still some work to do still got buttons missing on the control panel from when I picked it up guys so many things yet to do and I guess this brings me on to my next little point I want to have a chat with you about and that is I'm starting to feel like I'm running an arcade and I know it sounds sort of obvious because I the amount of machines that I've got in here I sort of am I, but I don't have that many actually really I mean I, well let's count um, we've got Grand Champion Astro City um, we've got the Neo Geo we've got the um, it's got the world rally got the super sprint we've got the virtual pinball we've got the ice cold beer we've got the hank and cocktail we've got the space invaders um, real machine we've got the space invaders upright so that, sorry that was the space invaders cocktail space invaders upright we've got the hyper olympic we've got this one the uh, super uh, street fighter uh, Alien vs Predator with the Raspberry Jammer now, and we've got the Outrun, and we've got the um, we've got the <laughs> we've got the Championship Sprint um, in storage. Uh, it's in the storage area anyway. Um, we've got the two Daytonas, and uh, we've got the other um, uh, fake Sega Blast and we've got the real Sega Blast in pieces and plus we've got a Pleads cocktail machine shit <laughs> that's a lot of cabinets actually <sighs> hang on one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Did I count that right? So 18 cabinets. And of course, you know, one of them in pieces, but hmm. You think about having 18 machines. Any of you guys that have got machines at the moment, and you might have just one or two or three or four maybe, but 18, that's actually a lot of machines. And now that I've actually just counted them up, that's really actually taken me by surprise because I sort of remember counting you know ages ago that I had like 13 machines and somehow it's got five extra now to 18. So guys the thing is is um, with that amount of machines it's like it really is like running a little arcade and when you run a little arcade things go wrong and there's always something to fix and there's something always to come back to and do and the project list now guys is just massive and when I go around and do the update um, to show everyone you know the, the current what's in here 
And again, I can't do that right now even because it's just a mess at the moment. Um, but once I do that, I'll give an update and it's in this in terms of what needs to be done for each machine <coughs> to get it where I want it to get it. And every single machine, nearly, no, all of them, they all have something <laughs> that needs to be done. And it's just a list. And I think I'm going to take that approach like, um, there's an approach where you just, you just dump uh, everything, um, dump everything down that needs to be done. Just get it out of your head, guys, because it's just, it just does my head and thinking about, I've got to do that, I've got to do that, when I'm going to do that, oh, that's right, I've got to do this, and that's not ready, and I'm waiting for this to come in, and oh, I've got to order that, and oh, where's those other bits that I had for the other thing, and did, have I got the paint, did I need to go to Bunnings, what? And it's, it's like, I mean, if it was a full-time job, it would just keep me busy every day for, for weeks. <laughs> so, so I guess that's why, guys, you sort of see that the progress is a little bit slow because, yeah, I've got a normal, you know, day job and all the rest of it. So I don't have the luxury to, you know, to be in here and do all this stuff. And it's a shame, but I don't want it to be my full-time job either. So anyway, I don't know. I just thought I'd share that with you guys because, um, and, you know, I think there's, in some ways, through emulation and stuff, you can get a long way with this hobby, you know, just have Having like a machine like this, like one doing horizontal and another one doing um, uh, vertical games, you know, and maybe a cocktail just to sort of break it up and, and one driver, here I go, so <laughs> that's the problem, you start with one or two and you go, oh I think I could get a driver, or maybe I'll get one with, you know, handlebars, or maybe a sit down cabinet would be good, or what about one of those smaller ones, what about a two player driver, and that's, that's where it goes guys, that's where it takes off and suddenly you've got 18 games in your house. Um, so I don't know what the answer is there, <laughs> I really don't, it's, it's, uh, it's actually a problem, but I think if you could just have two machines, one on the horizontal and one on the vertical, that's enough, that really is guys, and you'd probably spend a lot less time, you know, stuffing around with it all and just actually enjoying and playing the games, um, but I mean, look. Having said all that, oh god, this is such, I'm such, such a paradox. All this whole thing, because I think some of the fondest memories and and fun times I've had in this hobby so far has actually been the pickups. Uh, I think the pickups are just are just awesome fun. That whole the whole chase, the whole excitement when you see something come up, and you know I, that never gets old. And I think that's why I'm still constantly looking um, for things that come up and just. If you're just seeing again those weird and wonderful machines that come up all over the place, it's just so cool. That aspect of it's really, really good. Going and grabbing a bargain is also really, really cool. But the realization when you get those bargains home that there are a lot, you know, there's so much to do, there's so much work involved in it. Even though that's a real problem, it's so satisfying when you jump over hurdles and you get aspects of those things done and then you have something that is working. So I don't know guys, it's, it's such a quandary, you know. I, I, you know, when I was 11 I just loved playing Spikes and Motors, I loved playing Galag, I loved just playing the game. So I never thought about A, owning any of these machines and then B, actually having any sort of technical know-how to, to fix them. <laughs> so it's just, I don't know, it's just bizarre how it's all uh, progressed. So anyway guys, I just wanted to, to share that with you because it's been on my mind lately and in some ways um, it's it's been a little bit of pressure too, like, you know, which has also impacted my ability to, to you know, readily do these videos as well as everything else going on because it's, you know, again, I remember I keep saying I don't want this to be like a job because as soon as you do that, then you you know you, you've you've lost the, the the passion behind it, and I certainly haven't lost the passion, guys. It is there. It's been a little bit suppressed lately because of other external factors, but it's damn sure is still there. And I want to get through. I, I and God, I, it's almost like I can see like there is a finish line, but every time I run a little bit closer to that finish line, I'm like shit that finish line's moved it's a, mir it's a mirage <laughs> it's just moving away every time I run and somehow I'm just convincing myself that that's okay <laughs> that's all right enjoy the journey right enjoy the journey there is no finish line you've got to enjoy the journey that's the key actually if you're not enjoying the journey stop change what you're doing 
I started joy it again. <laughs> anyway, that's my that's my uh, current sort of thinking mode uh, about having all these machines. So I don't know if some of you share those opinions, but anyway, there it is. All right, guys. Well, that is gonna conclude for this video. So look after yourselves, uh, guys, and um, I hope you're enjoying your games sort of a bit more than I am lately, uh, in terms of time and having the time to do it. We're getting into the you know the the silly season at the end of the year. Hopefully, some of you guys are getting some holidays. I will be getting some holidays over Christmas actually. So that will be a really good time. Hopefully, to get a lot of things knocked over. Um, Coming up, I know I have got lots and lots and lots of work leading up to Christmas, and uh, that may certainly still impact me, but again, I will try to, to uh, keep going with the videos, getting them out. Anyway, wrapping it up, <laughs> it's time to go. So again, look after yourself, and ciao for now. You must continue. You can do it. You are amazing. The theater is now closed.